with me, Pam Joseph. Okay, uh, you may remember a couple of weeks ago we had a very nice, a dapper young man by the name of Simon Noble, uh, who was the project manager at Cleone Foods. Uh, Ireland, you're right, Patty, does that ring a bell? Yes, well, we've got the big man now today, the big guy who's in the house today. Uh, he is the CEO of Cleone Foods, and he goes by the name of Wade Lee. And I said, how did you know? How did you know? How do you do? You're so busy. Thank you ever so much for taking the time out to come and visit us. And I know you wanted to supposed to come a couple of weeks ago, but you're so busy. Yes, I yeah. have other board appointments because yeah. I'm on a number of other companies as well. I can imagine, Mr. Lee. Very busy man. Uh, well done. And thank you for coming in today. Okay, let's get a recap. When uh, Simon came in, he spoke to us about your new brand, and it's the Asian style brand. Yes, it's yeah. the Asian style brand. Just recently launched in Asda. Um, and we do um, uh, the traditional um, Asian dishes, the lamb keema, mm -hmm. the chicken um, tikka, and the aloo sajit. Wonderful, wonderful. How's it going? It's only in a number of stores, so it's probably in about 20 Asda stores across the UK. Right. It's, it's slowly. Early it's early days. It's early days, days yes. Yeah. We've only been in there about three or four weeks now. Okay, so I'm sure that's going to take on. Yeah. That's very good. Let us just talk a bit more about you, if I yeah. if I can, Wade. Um, right, you started the business when and why? In the last recession, back in 1989, mm -hmm. um, in a place in Birmingham called um, Newtown, which is was just after the riots, so that particular area had what we call uh, government funding to relocate there. So I actually started back then with only five staff. Um, and we had a long-term plan to get the products into the major multiples mm -hmm. and we had a 10-year plan for that so we established ourselves at that original location in Newtown uh, back in 1989 and then in 1994 we moved to the current location which is now our main manufacturing base um, and from there then we pushed on to actually achieve all the accreditation that, that were required at that particular time. Right. But you could have started in anything. Why patties? I think the, the main reason starting patties, um, when I left university, uh, I trained as a teacher and I, I fell at risk <laughs> in, in, a, in a particular subject called craft design technology. Right. To the older people, it would be woodwork, metalwork, yeah, okay. and plastics. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> to, the, to the new generation, yeah. it, it's, it's the technical su of yeah. the subject. Um, so when I left, I had a job um, in a company in Wolverhampton making patties um, called Comlon Caterers, which are now called Quick Foods. And they gave me the opportunity in which to learn the skills. And from that, um, I saw a gap in the marketplace whereby they were doing products unwrapped. Right. So my USP was to put a wrapper on. Um, and by putting a, a wrapping on the product, um, you actually gain a wider marketplace. Um, so that was the emphasis of, of leaving that company after I did the two years there. I then set my own company up. But what I did do, I didn't want to take their customers away, so I left their customers and I and I fronted new customers. That's very decent of you. Not a lot of people would have done that. Well, well, w within the food industry, if you like a particular shop, for instance, yeah. uh, not if you say from shop at Martha Spencer's, they're foreigners trained. You always like their stuff and you wouldn't possibly want to go to somewhere else. You'd probably yeah. want to do that. So from that emphasis, oh, I, yeah. I, I did that and I wanted to open up a new marketplace, but a wider market audience. Right, okay. Your ingredients are varied. We talked about the Asian. Let's leave that for a minute. But um, <coughs> you also have halal. Yeah, we do the halal ranges. Yep. Um, you've got the, the, the usual, the vegetable, the salt fish, the beef and the chicken, but you've also got the jerk. Well, with the advent of um, Levi Roots, obviously from Dragon's Den yeah. a few years ago, um, we tried to do something with him um, January of 2009, but he was tied up with WT Foods, um, and we had all the packaging set up, we wanted to manufacture a range of Levi Roots yeah. patties, so um, that didn't come off, so um, we thought, well, the market read for a jerk chicken, and we were ready two years ago with this particular product, oh. but the market wasn't ready. So we developed the packaging last year, developed all the ingredients over a three month period, and we have has Sainsbury's to list it, and it's listed in all the Sainsbury stores. Uh, not all the Sainsbury's stores, it's, it's about 150 stores. They gave me over 100 stores last week. Oh, wow. 
um, oh, just for the one. jerk chicken, just for the jerk, jerk chicken. chicken of course. They hadn't listed the other varieties, so we we sell about four to five different products in oh, Sainsbury's. That will come pretty soon. The other products as well. But talking about Sainsbury's, um, remind our audience again of the uh, outlets that they can um, buy. Or yeah, purchase your I mean our products are predominantly in the ethnic areas, mm -hmm. um, so they would be Brixton, for instance, and Hearth and Wolverton. Mm -hmm. They're in those sorts of areas. Uh, but we actually supply into Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda, Morrison's Co-op, um, some some Summerfield, which are now being converted, of course, and in Iceland as well. So those are our, our bigger customers. Wow. Those are huge customers. <laughs> well, 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 they are huge customers. So, you know, from my aspect is that I wanted to get a Caribbean product into mainstream. Yeah, I want to yeah. make sure Patty's as popular yeah. as Saint Kitty Pie. Right. Okay. And I was going to say something to you because some people, um, I still find, I was talking to British people, they would call it pasty. But yeah. you don't call it pasty and not patty. Well, well, in the Caribbean we call it patty. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's that conversion yeah. that we always said it's yeah. like a, a, pasty, a pasty, but it's a patty. But it's a patty. And then they said, why is it yellow? I said because in. In the old days, they used to colour the pastries with curry powder. That's right. So it used to be more green. Now we've made it with natural colouring now, yeah. so it's more of a yellowy colour. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So there is a difference, but still they like it, but they still call it pasty. Exactly. <laughs> so we've got to convert them. Yeah. We've got to convert. Them. But I see in front of you here, wait, two particular awards. Uh, you're feeling very proud right now as I say this. Um, let me just go through the first one here. Uh, 2009 Business Community Award. Uh, impact on society award for a small company clearing yeah. food what we do i mean we've got i employ about 50 people at our base in birmingham and um over the years we we, we do involve the community and and part of being in what we call business and community yeah. um we won an award for a small company impact now yeah. if you can imagine that i have to compete with the top 500 listed companies on the stock exchange so we're the first company to enter on our first attempt and achieved well, the well award. Done. So um, it was a great honor and I went down to meet Prince Charles at Clarence House last year. Oh, okay. um, the Leadership Award, the Prince's Ambassador Award. That was for this year. I, I, I represent the West Midlands and that was awarded by Prince Charles. Right. And th the key thing is, is that um, he awards this particular ambassadorship to somebody in the area yeah. that would actually promote what, what business is all about in engaging within the community. I hope we're going to show a bit of that as we carry on speaking.